Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the transient keyword, which is uh, used when you're serializing objects. And we're going to take a look at a few other things in the context of serialization, just to wrap the subject up from the previous two tutorials. So I've got the code here from the last two tutorials on serialization. And uh, I've changed uh, write objects so that we're just writing one object to our to our file and uh, that's uh, test.seer I've called it and um, we've also got read objects which is reading that one object back from the serialized file um, so uh, the first thing I want to show you is is a transient keyword let's take a look at the object that we're actually writing and that's this person object here so we've, we've got a two string method and um, that just allows us to output the person object with system.out.println. And we've, we've also got two fields here, uh, ID and name. And uh, we've got this constructor that allows us to construct the person object. So at the moment now I can run write objects, let's run that. And it writes the objects to this test.ser. You might have to right click and refresh your project if you if you're actually if you want to see a file that you're writing to your project directory um, you might have to go to um, refresh down here this one and then we've got read objects here which if I run that it reads the object from the file and it uh, outputs the object with system.out.println now uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to serialize more fields than you actually have to because that's going to be inefficient. And sometimes there are going to be fields in your object that you just can't serialize or if you did serialize it, it'd be pretty weird. So an example might be uh, if you're using threads, which I discuss in my multi-threading tutorial, you don't want to um, try to serialize a lock or something like that. So certain kinds of fields you, you don't need to serialize or it's just not useful to serialize them. And you can prevent fields being serialized, serialized using the transient keyword, which is pretty simple. So let's supposing, for example, that we've decided we, we don't need to serialize this ID for some reason. Normally you would want to serialize an ID, but just to have an example, let's change this to private transient int ID and like all the other keywords in Java transient has a lowercase t. Now we'll run uh, write objects again so that's going to serialize this uh, an object of this person class we'll run that and then we'll run read objects here and now we can see that the ID is naught instead of seven which it was previously because in write objects here I'm constructing the person with an ID of seven and what's happening now is that uh, because I've marked this ID as transient, it's not being serialized. And uh, the reason it's not is because fields like this in Java are initialized to a default value. That's not true of local variables within your methods, but your, your top level fields in your class will be given a default value to start with. And for integers, that's going to be naught. So that's why this is set at naught. It hasn't been serialized. So that's the transient keyword. It's pretty simple. You just use it to prevent things from being serialized. Now, something uh, someone kindly pointed out to me, which I, uh, I, I kind of forgotten somehow, was that um, here I'm, I'm using one of these Java 7 style try with resources blocks to uh, construct my file input stream and object input stream here. And that the try with resources, this kind of style of try catch will automatically call a close method on on these um, objects if they implement the auto closable interface which they do in Java 7 but it's possible to make this quite a lot tidier by uh, nesting our constructors so what we really need here is we need this object input stream because we're, we're using that down here we don't really need the handle to this file input stream and what I can do is object input stream needs this file input stream here, but I can just take this bit where we actually construct the file input stream and paste it right into the constructor argument of object input stream. And then I don't need this stuff here. 
we can get rid of that. And that's a bit tidier. I'd sort of started avoiding doing things like this because I, I don't like to see things nested too much. It makes it a little bit harder to debug if things go wrong. But in this case, we know it's working anyway. We've already used this and this, this does uh, look a bit more elegant, I must admit. Let's change write objects too. So I'm just going to construct this new file output stream right in the actual constructor brackets of object output stream. And then we can get rid of this. And uh, let's check that it works as before. So I'll go and minimize the editor and we'll run write objects here and read objects. And we get the same result as before. We've successfully serialized and deserialized the object there. Another thing that's um, worth mentioning is uh, the behavior of static fields under serialization. Let's go to person here and let's give person a static field. Let's say um, something like private static int count, whatever that is going to be. And I'll provide a get and set method for count. Let's see if we can get the ID E to do that automatically. So I'll right click here and go to source, generate getters and setters. I'm not sure if I've actually tried this before, but yeah, it seems to work. We select count, click OK. And of course, our getters and setters are going to be static because um, we only need to have uh, static methods to access a static field. So these methods are associated with the class, not with individual objects. And so is this field here. And that, that's the point of static um, fields, you may recall, that the, there isn't going to be one bit of data for every object now. There's only, only going to be one actual um, static int count here for all objects, and every object sees the same field here. And if you think about it, that means it wouldn't make sense to serialize count. So to demonstrate that, let's go to write objects, and let's say here, person dot set count and I'll set it to 88 or something and let's let's also change the to string method let's just check this warning here so it's saying the static method set count should be accessed in a static way yeah that's um, something I've done wrong because set count it belongs to the class we should use the class to uh, access it it's a static method so we should do it like this rather than using a particular object and we're setting that for all objects of that class because there's only one field. I can also make to string um, output this field as well. So let's go to person here. Let's delete the existing to string. And I'm going to right click and go to source, generate to string. Well, um, it's not giving us the option to add count in there, so I'll add it in manually. I guess it's not really normal to have a static field in a two-string method. What I can do is I can just add it in. So let's let's say here at the end, maybe plus. Um, in fact, I could add some text here. Count is, and then we can add on count. Now let's see what happens when I serialize this object and deserialize it. So I'm going to run write objects here and I'm going to run read objects and we see that count is zero and again the, the because count is a kind of class level field it's at the, it's at the top here it's um, it's it's going to have a default value which is going to be zero but you'll notice that I set count and yet count was not serialized and deserialized and in fact static fields are not serialized and the reason for that is there's no need to serialize a static field it wouldn't make sense to be saving a value of that field for every object because the field belongs to the class not to individual objects so you would just be saving the same data over and over again uh, if you want to if you've got a field that's static and you think it should be serialized then you probably want a non-static field in there Okay, so um, I think there's a, a couple of more things that I just want to cover here. Yeah, so let's let's take a look at this serial version UID. I don't think I covered this in previous tutorials. If I did, then my apologies. But I'm just going to go through it here because I don't think I've gone through it in much detail yet. 
if you create a, uh, a class which is serializable, in other words, it implements a serializable interface which has no methods in it, it's just kind of like a flag saying that this is serializable, then Eclipse will give you this warning saying the class does not declare a static final serial version UID field of type long which uh, is quite annoying to be honest because we don't really often need to use this field but let's um, let's click on that warning and go to add generated serial version UID and I, I say yes that I want to save this and get rid of these superfluous comments what does this actually do? well um, serialization will work just fine without that there was only a warning there there wasn't an error um, so now this is just working as it always has I can write objects and read them and we get stuff down here but watch what happens if I um, write an object with one serial version UID and then I, I change the ID let's change this to one you'll notice there's a capital L on the end there and that's um, that kind of casts what would otherwise be by default an integer to type long and so we've, we've actually changed the ID here and now I'm going to run read objects and what we get is we get this uh, error it's an invalid class exception which you can catch if you want to um, it's a runtime error so we're not forced to catch it uh, but you can catch it if you want to when you read your objects back, you could catch it down here by adding a catch invalid class exception. So what this is, it is purely um, what it appears to be really. It's just a check to make sure that you're deserializing with the same version of the class that you serialized with. So it's just a way of preventing people uh, deserializing objects when you've actually changed the class. If you change the class significantly, to the point where you don't want people to be able to deserialize um, objects using the new version of your class, which was pre which were previously serialized with the old version of your class, then you can just change the ID up here, and it will no longer be possible to deserialize using this new class. Not something that's terribly useful most of the time. If we change the ID to what to, to what it back to what it was originally, um, we can now run read objects, and it will work fine as before. So it's just a little check on making sure you're using the same version of the class to deserialize that you originally serialized with. And the last thing I want to mention is the behavior of constructors with serialization. Uh, so we've got a constructor here that we're using to construct this person object right here. Let's create a default constructor as well. Let's say public person. I don't think we're really going to use this, but I'll, I'll, put, I'll bung one in anyway. And I'm going to say sys out, um, let's say default constructor. And uh, here I'm going to put a sys out, sys out control space, and um, to argument constructor. <laughs> okay, constructor, there we go. So let's, let's, run, um, let's run write objects here. So remember, write objects is actually creating a person using the two argument constructor. So let's run this. And it says down here, writing objects, that's coming from up here, and then two argument constructor, because of course we're running that constructor. And you have to run some constructor to, to construct an object. If you, if you see new somewhere in your code anywhere, then that is gonna invoke a constructor. But now if, if we run read objects here, let's run this, you'll notice that um, no constructor is run. And um, that makes sense, again, if you think about it. When you deserialize an object, you don't want to run any of the constructors. All you want to do is you want to get an object that um, has the field set to what, whatever they were when you originally serialized the object. So this is one situation where you, you're getting an object um, without running any constructor at all. So whatever you put in your constructors, it's not going to make a difference when you deserialize stuff um, because um, these fields are just going to be restored to what they were when you originally serialized the object. So de deserializing doesn't run any constructors, which is something just to be aware of, really, in case you've done a massive load of initialization in your constructors and again that makes sense if you think about it there's no reason why you would want to run 
a constructor when you deserialize an object normally. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I just want to mention briefly that uh, I redesigned my website recently and uh, it no longer looks um, like some uh, terrible mess. Uh, it looks a lot better now, I think, apart from this picture of me. <laughs> but um, you can find all my latest stuff here. Here are my free YouTube videos and you can find my courses, the free and paid ones there. And I've also got, if you go to the homepage, there's also like a mailing list that you can subscribe to if you want to get a bunch of discounts on, um, on my premium tutorials. So uh, do check out caveofprogramming.com. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to look, I think, at um, we're going to look at the difference between passing by value and passing by reference. And in fact, this is a tutorial that several people have asked me to make and Java only implements passing by value. But we're going to look at, at what that actually is, what those terms mean. And um, we're going to look at some little gotchas that might catch you out with Java. So that's for next time. And until then, happy coding.